Good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast, if you're just joining us here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is uh, going to be on the uh, resolutions of the Southern Governors Meeting. Uh, earlier, we had uh, shared uh, some of those resolutions, including those on uh, state police, uh, a Southern uh, president in 2023, and of course, um, you know, also their thoughts on the PIB. Mm -hmm. This morning, we're speaking with the Publicity Secretary of the Northern Elders Forum, Mr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. And uh, we're also going to be speaking with um, the Publicity Secretary of the Pan Niger Delta, For uh, Niger Delta Forum, uh, Mr. Ken Robinson. Good morning to you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to. Thanks for joining. I'm going to start with Mr. Baba Ahmed uh, from uh, the Na Northern Elders Forum. Uh, quickly share your thoughts on the resolutions from yesterday. But before you get into it, I saw something yesterday. Uh, Sani Yabagi, the chairman of ADP, he described the Southern Governors' meeting as a gang up against President Buhari and the North. Um, so, do you agree with him? And what are your other thoughts? I would prefer to give you my opinion rather than someone else's. Absolutely. Um, I saw the, um, the communique as um, um, one more effort by very senior politicians, governors, opinion molders, people who should, um, who should know um, the, the way to approach political issues um, in, in a way that doesn't do justice to their positions. If, if um, Southern governors want the presidency, they should work for it, um, demanding or giving ultimatum or things that appear like threats is not good politics. Uh, you cannot, in a democratic setting, insist that you must have things your way. There are ways in which you can get the presidency. And it's, it's simple. Work within your party, field candidates, wherever they come from, and work to get them elected. This business of uh, it must come here, it must stay there, doesn't work. It will not work. And people will not be impressed. And I, I have to say that I'm disappointed. Um, this is the second time Southern governors who one would have thought are sophisticated, um, very, very polished politicians are making this kind of uh, demands, uh, obviously targeted at the northern part of the country. Um, give us the presidency. The presidency is not given. The presidency is, is competed for, it's worked for, and uh, the North is not, I guess, anybody who becomes president, provided they work through the democratic uh, and political process. What the governors are doing there is looking for shortcuts, and I'm afraid they're not going to get it. Okay. Um, Mr. Baba Ahmed, let's uh, put a pause here. Um, we we'll have a report that our correspondent filed yesterday, a comprehensive one um, regarding that meeting that was held in Alausa, Lagos. Um, so Hakim Baba Ahmed, Publicity Secretary, Northern Isles Forum. Also, we were speaking um, with Mr. Ken Robinson of uh, Pandef. Do stay with us. Let's uh, take a listen to this report. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sangwulu and his deputy Femi Hamzad welcoming each of the southern governors to their second meeting in as many months. They are here to assess the decision taken during their meeting of May the 11th when they announced a ban on open grazing and disclosed their stand on restructuring and state policing. Governors go into closed-door talks, which last about five hours. At the end, the chairman of the forum and governor of Ondo State, Rotemi Akiridolu, reads the communique. The forum reiterates its commitment to the policies of equity, fairness, and unanimously agreed that the presidency of Nigeria be located between Southern and Northern Nigeria and resolve that the next president of Nigeria should emerge from the South. The Southern Governors Forum rejects the removal of electronic transmission of election results from the Electoral Act and rejects the confirmation of exclusive jurisdiction in pre-election matters on the federal ICOF. The governors re-emphasized the need for state policing after reviewing the security situation in Nigeria. The forum resolved that if for any reason security institutions need to undertake 
an operation in any state, the state chief security officer must be duly informed. The issue of open grazing and the petroleum industry bill are also mentioned. The forum set a timeline of Wednesday, the 1st of September 2021, for the promulgation of the anti grazing law in all its member states. Anti-open, sorry, anti-open grazing law. Eleven of the 17 southern governors were present for the meeting. Four were represented by their deputies, while the governors of Anambra and Cross River states were absent. Jacinta Ubuku for Plus TV, Africa. Um, yes, that was a report by Jacinta Obiku there, um, filling in uh, reactions and exactly what occurred um, when 11 or southern governors met in Alausa yesterday um, for their meeting. And we've been speaking with um, Hakim Baba Ahmed, representing the Northern Elders Forum, and also in conversation with Mr. Ken Robinson. He's a publicity secretary of the pan Niger Delta Forum. Uh, Mr. Robinson, good morning again. Good morning, um Okay, let's first get your thoughts generally on this meeting yesterday and all the resolutions that they had. Well, we, Panaja Delta Forum, applause the courage, determination, and commitment of the Southern governors to sustain the, the unity of Southern Nigeria. It is, it is interesting and it is pleasing that in, in the, that they met again um, under, under two months after their Asaba historic meeting. And the, the, the decisions and resolutions in, in this their meeting in Lagos is, is again adding their voice and strengthening the position of the, South, of the people of Southern Nigeria. On power rotation, you know that Pandev and other organizations in southern Nigeria, like Afenifere and Oaneze Indigo, had consistently uh, maintained that power should shift to southern Nigeria after eight years of a northern president. And so we congratulate the governors, we commend them, and we hope that they will sustain this momentum in spite of, of the attempts to distract them. The people of Southern Nigeria uh, is for us. This is a new beginning of understanding and living in harmony as a people in the country Nigeria. Okay. Mr. Robinson, but um, Mr. Baba Ahmed just mentioned that rather than the South demanding um, for power that it's rotated to them, that the South can work for it. How about the perspective? Should the South not be thinking of working for it, you know, internally, rather than, you know, making demands that, you know, they just get that um, power share this time around? Well, uh, we, we, we understand their concerns, but nobody had made any contrary comments when the 19 Northern governors uh, have been meeting all this while. And they, they, they have continued to sustain those meetings year after year, regime after regime, nobody has condemned any of their resolutions, even when some are very obnoxious and irrational. Now, Southern Nigeria has started a new reality that we are one people, our problems are the same, those languages and tribes may differ, but we are one people. And, and that's why it's so exciting. And, and this is our people, our governors, um, who are actually um, there in trust for the people. They represent the collective interests and aspirations of the people. And it is a good thing that they have that realization and they are coming together in spite of their political differences and persuasions. So, so we, we commend them and we, we hope that our brothers and friends right. from Northern Nigeria will appreciate the fact and perhaps begin to see how all of us can work together for a united, a just, fair, and, 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 and uh, equitable Nigeria. Where any right. Nigerian, Doctor. no matter where you come from, no matter your religion, 
can right. become whatever that you desire to be. All right, and Mr. All Robinson, hold on. Um, hold on. I want to bring back uh, Dr. Uh, Hakim Baba Ahmed. Um, some other things that you mentioned, uh, well, your thoughts basically were mostly regarding uh, the demand for a president from the southern part of the country in 2023. But there were other resolutions um, uh, that were reached. There's uh, the one on state police, there's on the petroleum industry bill, there's also on um, you know, um, raids and arrests made by security agencies in their states, and also on the anti-open grazing law. Um, these governors, according to their uh, statements, met you know, and made these resolutions in order to achieve a more peaceful uh, southern Nigeria and, of course, uh, to pave a way forward. So are there any of these other resolutions that you agree uh, you know, um, are important and are being done in good faith and you, you know, are in support of, including the anti-open grazing law? Well, any comment made by 17 governors, uh, we have to presume is being made in good faith. Um, it could be wrong, um, as, as some of them are. Um, and uh, there are contexts in which these, some of these issues are best raised. Governors are very important people. They are members of virtually all the major decision-making bodies at the national level. National Security Council, National Council of State, uh, uh, a lot of other issues. They have access to the president, who is the chief security officer of the country. They have um, many avenues with which they can raise issues regarding security, um, their decision on open grazing. Um, what, is, what is amazing about this uh, tendency to bring very sensitive issues and matters that are best handled in, in confidential context is that uh, southern governors have chosen to go public with many matters that they can achieve a lot more out of if they engage those who should do. For instance, the, the, um, the question about uh, no, no security activity or operation should take place in the state um, without the approval or the knowledge of the governor is very curious. Um, uh, one, one would ask naturally, well, what exactly do they want? The president, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because we believe that we need to, to do some serious work on how much power regarding security is vested in the president and, and commander in chief of the armed forces. Um, if southern governors believe that um, they need more power to exercise, to need, they need to exercise more power in terms of security operations in their state, uh, a statement is not going to be what they need to do. It's, uh, again, like the uh, southern presidency thing, uh, they need to work very hard with the decision-making processes, with the legislature, with the, with the president, and with other Nigerians to make sure that um, governors have more powers either to vet, approve, stop, or uh, modify the operations of uh, security agencies in their state. But as, as things stand, I don't see the constitutional basis or even the political rationale for bringing a matter of such sensitivity unless the governors have a specific issue in mind and they don't want or they don't have the, um, the courage, let me be plain, to bring it up. Uh, but I, I don't see how that helps a situation where 17 governors say don't undertake a, a, a security operation in, in our state or in our region unless we're informed. Um, so that's, that's, that's the first one. The, uh, the issue about open grazing, they've made this position very clear. Um, there are various positions on this. Uh, we we uh, in, the, um, in the Northern Elders Forum have made our position on this issue very clear. Um, this is not an issue that can be um, solved overnight or by um, stroke of the pen uh, and with uh, deadlines. We understand it's, it's a very complex issue. There are legal issues involved. Um, we would like to see an end to open grazing, but we would like to see an orderly, organized, and, uh, and safe end to open grazing. We believe that this, this requires a national law to deal with. We, we don't believe that um, uh, hasty decisions or, or panic measures are going to be, to be the solution. Uh, open grazing is a national issue. It's not just a full line issue. It's not a northern issue. And it should be handled at the national level. The federal government and the state governments, all of them, not just the southern states, need to improve their collaboration, need to improve um, their sharing of information and strategies to deal with open grazing. 
So uh, there are there are a number of issues that I, on the whole, I just think that um, northern governors, southern governors, uh, play into a gallery in a manner that doesn't do justice to their standing uh, in this country. Mm. And it's sad because of all the times that we need our leaders to talk together, not to talk at each other, but to talk with each other, um, and, and to lower this tendency to go public with issues that they know very well um, will just simply heat up the quality. And fortunately, the southern governors have chosen um, this option. They, they would scare, they would, they would send signals to other parts of Nigeria, but principally the northern part of the country, that they're facing a hostile region um, that is making demands and what appears to be like threats. And we shouldn't be doing this. We should mm. be discussing the future of this country. We should be discussing um, uh, where the, this issue about uh, the northern or southern presidency, who becomes president, who doesn't. This is basically a democratic issue. It shouldn't lead, it shouldn't lead us into this kind of uh, situations. When you see the South, 17 governors, all of them members of the APC or PDP, and maybe one from Afghan, what do they do? How do they influence their parties? Do they speak at the political parties? Do they do they make cases for governors and for the South, for goodness sake? And uh, if we, if assuming just for the sake of argument, theoretically, you could get all northern politicians and all northern voters to say, okay, we all agree, the president should go should go to the South. Where should he go? Should he go to the people who are saying we've never had a president and it must be our turn? Should you go to the Southwest, which is also making a case for uh, the Yoruba presidency? Should we, should we go to the South South? Um, is, is it, this is everybody's interest. It's not just a Southern interest. What about the democratic process? How can you force all the voters in the North, force, literally force, because somebody in the South is threatening, how can you force the voters, even if the politicians can concede? How do you get the voters in the North to all line up and say, this time, we've been asked or we must vote for a Southern candidate. We have lazy politicians. We have politicians who prefer to work on, uh, towards a gallery uh, rather than to work with each other. And this is very dangerous for this country. They are okay. heating up the process of the elections in 2023. I'm, I'm, and well, this is not a positive outcome. Dr. Baba Ahmed, I'm not sure if it, if it can be described as forcing uh, because we've in the past had conversations on federal character. We've had conversations on um, rotation, you know, with regards to presidents, even on, at the state level. So I don't think this is necessarily forcing. This is, it sounds to me more like a suggestion that they would prefer if it goes to the south, not necessarily forcing anyone to vote in any direction. Well, I, I, the, the word forcing here, yeah, I'm sorry if I, I, I can't recall this. The point is, I'm saying this is not the kind of language or posture that supports a case for the Southern presidency. It suggests a demand um, which should not be placed on, on, the, on the table in a democratic context. It, it circumvents a very important political process, which is negotiation, compromise, and engagement. Um, it it, it, uh, it it cuts out a huge part of the country um, in a decision-making process that uh, it has no business doing. The presidency of Nigeria is not uh, the presidency of the Igbo or the Yoruba or the South South or the North. It is the president of Nigeria. Nigerians need to be involved in deciding who becomes president. And how they decide that is through the political process and through the electoral process. This is the democracy. And it just seems to me that people are trying to get something using very lazy tactics. It doesn't work like this. Like I said before, they need to work, work within their parties, work to convince everybody, all Nigerians, northerners and southerners, that it is time to have the president from the southern part of the country. Okay. And when we ask questions in the north, where did it go? Should it go to the Igbo? Should it go to the Yoruba? Should it go to the south south? Then you see the problem. Okay. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Baba Ahmed. Let's uh, invite Mr. Ken Robinson back into the conversation. Mr. Ken Robinson, can you hear us? Mr. Robinson. Okay. We'll try to reconnect with uh, Mr. Robinson there, Publicity Secretary of Pandef. But Dr. Baba Ahmed, um, regarding this issue of open grazing, you mentioned that it's a national issue and we should deal with it nationally. 
So are you basically saying that um, when these um, governors met and decided that from the September 1st, um, 2021, that open grazing will be banned in their states, that they're basically um, not having a nationalistic view? And I ask that because what the presidency has said in the person of President Muhammad Buhari is a support of open grazing and that grazing routes in Nigeria will be revitalized. So where do you think this might play in when the presidency is saying one thing, but the southern governors together are saying another? Well, with due respect, I don't speak for the presidency. And uh, I have to say that on a number of occasions, I think they've got it uh, wrong. Um, the, the issue about open grazing uh, needs to be handled with extreme sensitivity. And the mm -hmm. last one or two statements of I uh, coming from the presidency does not suggest that uh, the presidency is on its feet on this issue. First of all, um, uh, there is almost total unanimity that everybody agrees we need to bring open grazing to an end. It is wasteful, it is um, unproductive, it is now dangerous because it triggers other security uh, issues. But where we differ is that is it, where it says um, you need to sort it out. You need to sort out the criminal element among the herders uh, from the non-criminal element. And you need to bring a whole system that has existed for quite close to centuries um, in a manner that doesn't do justice to an economic asset and doesn't do justice to the security of communities. It can be done. There are programs within the presidency that are at an advanced stage um, that should be worked around by governors uh, all over the country to support it and, and to, to, to bring an end to um, uh, open grazing. What happened to all those plans? Why are we just talking about now deadlines and, uh, and, and, and timelines? So uh, they're not wrong to, to say we, we don't want open grazing, but the, what, they're, what, they're, what they shouldn't do is to put a situation, is to put a date or circumstances that makes it very difficult to have Nigerians who have rights um, to be where they are, and to put laws or regulations that offend um, constitutionality. Now, I'm not an expert here. I'm not sure whether the president is right um, or the minister of justice is right when he says it's unconstitutional to do this. I'm not going to get into that. But what I would say is this. I think that it is wrong to insist that open um, routes and um, cattle routes in, in all parts of the country need to be open. They, they, you have a conflict there between the Land Use Act, which is in the Constitution, the rights of governors to decide what to do with land in their states, and, and, and the um, presidency's position that uh, cattle must be allowed um, to go through um, old cattle routes. Um, I think there the presidency needs to update its knowledge and, uh, and, and understanding of what the Constitution involves. But this is not about laws. It's about... Uh, um, the rights of Nigerians to operate in a place and where governors decide that this particular economic activity represents a threat or is unacceptable for very good reasons, then we should find a way to do it responsibly and constructively and in a manner that doesn't suggest that you are just pushing out people because you have the powers to do that. When you say the um, president needs to uh, look closer at uh, what the laws say, um, it it kind of sounds, I, I don't know if you, if you uh, are saying that the um, presidency and of course the Minister of Justice may not be fully aware or be you know, able to fully interpret what the Constitution says um, in, in that regard. Um, and then second, there, it, we're having a conversation now with regards to loss of human lives and property that has gone on for too, far too long. The same speed with which we give orders with regards to a national identification number and other things and give deadlines, you know, and of course, threaten to block lines for people who do not get registered and some of all of that. Why can't we do the same thing with regards cattle? You know, and at the same time, and I just want to have your thoughts, you know, generally, at the same time, we're, we're talking about grazing roots. There's no other business in Nigeria that has its roots across the country that, you know, are demanding that they, they have their own roots to carry their, their, um, their goods and services. First of all, let, let's address the first issue you raised. There's a tendency to, um, to, to suggest that every time the presidency... Um, muddles its way through governance, and it does that a lot. 
um, and issues and shows lack of understanding or lack of competence in management and handling issues. People tend to think, oh, this is a, they're, they're protecting uh, the interests of the North. They're not. They are not protecting anybody's interests. The, the presidency needs to improve its level of competence and understanding of the context in which it lives, uh, Nigerians live, and, uh, the, and in a democratic setting. That's the first point. We are not protecting, and we don't speak for the presidency. And many times they, they're wrong. Uh, the security situation in the country has spiraled uh, into very dangerous uh, level because of, of, of incompetence from the presidency. That's important to to um, to to, uh, to note first. Then, secondly, the the um, when the president was talking to a TV station and he says, "I've ordered for uh, the reactivation of uh, raising routes." Um, what came to my mind, uh, not just me, but a lot of people, is perhaps the president has forgotten the fact that the 1999 constitution vests powers to administer land um, uh, in, on governance. Uh, they can actually revoke those routes and uh, reallocate, uh, reallocate them under the law. Um, and and uh, to the degree that it, 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 the law doesn't say, no, you can't do that because you're, you're, you are exercising the irresponsible powers, they have the power to do that. Uh, so where, where does the president get his power to reactivate old gut, cut rules? In any case, it's not issues about power, like I said, it's about responsibility. Governors in the southern part of the country have a responsibility to, if they want to, stop open grazing in a manner that doesn't do justice to any element of the Nigerian community. That's, that's for me, that, that, that's the point. Now, people tend to compare. They say things like, okay, why do they, do, why do they um, rush into certain things and they achieve some objectives, uh, arrest Kanu, um, chase uh, Sunday Igbo, or we see bandits and we see kidnappers. Why are we not chasing all these threats with the same speed and the same resolve? Um, again, go back to the presidency, ask them, what is, what is happening uh, to the bandit? We want to see an end to the bandit in the north. We want to see an end to kidnap. We want to see a strong, decisive resolve against bandits and kidnappers. Maybe the same the same result that uh, was deployed in the arrest of Khan and um, and the attempts to arrest uh, Bo. We support it because we we see uh, from where we stand evidence uh, of Nigerians who believe that they can break laws in this country and get political protection. We want to see all criminals, all, irrespective of where they come from, brought to book. That's what we want. So we don't, we don't, we don't see a double standard here. We don't want to see a double standard. We believe the presidency should attack all sources of threats on Nigerians. And on, and on, but we should also exercise uh, the powers that we have, uh, both the president and governors, in a very responsible manner. Okay. So one of the you know, news that broke in the past few hours is about um, both chambers um, saying that INEC has the power to go ahead and conduct elections um, electronically. People can vote online, but that the result of those elections must not be transmitted online. So at the um, Governors Forum uh, meeting yesterday, they held that to consolidate Nigeria's democracy and strengthen the electoral process, that they basically reject the removal of electronic transmission of results um, from the Electoral Act. And they also say that they reject the um, confirmation of exclusive jurisdiction in pre-election matters. So um, does the Northern Elders Forum stand with the Southern governors on this one? Or do they differ regarding you know, electronic transmission? mission of results because Miss people especially the PDP who I spoke to yesterday alleged that this is just a ploy for the APC to rig the elections um, if come 2023. Northern Elders Forum doesn't necessarily all the time take different stands from southern governors. Southern governors uh, quite often uh, have the same position. Look southern governors speak for communities. We engage those communities at different levels. We may have meetings with Hanese, we have meetings with Apeniferi, our concern and concerns of groups in the southern part of the country on many issues are shared. We, we share the same concern. One of the most important things the nation needs to do is to come to terms with the fact that our ele electron, uh, uh, electro electoral act needs massive and qualitative improvements. So we support the idea of improving the electoral process. We support 
any innovation that improves the credibility of the elections, um, safety of the ballot, um, and, and the certainty that people who emerge through the electoral process are actually genuinely elected. Um, we followed the debate in the, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the National Assembly regarding the, uh, the reforms to amendments to the Electoral Act. And um, we, hope, we had hoped, actually, that the uh, ele ele uh, electoral transmission of results would pass. Um, if, it, if it is established, and I'm not sure that we've seen the end of this issue, if it is established that um, it will not be, then it represents a, a sad um, development. Uh, and, and there are a number of other sensitive uh, issues on, on relating to uh, improving the quality of our electoral process in that, that we must go through. And the Eighth Senate, um, uh, and the huge number of amendments were forwarded to the presidency um, a number of times. They were returned back. And we were hoping that now that the president has a, a very cooperative and very, um, uh, uh, let, me, let me use a polite term, um, supportive National Assembly and an INIC that is literally desperate for a new electoral act um, to allow it to prepare long before the 2023 elections. We were hoping that we will not have this kind of argument at this late hour. Uh, electronic transmission of results is good. Um, it should be there, and uh, it should be supported by everybody. Uh, and I think that uh, the southern governors, again, I, I remind, I remind Nigerians, have uh, are very powerful. They have many, many avenues uh, through which they can do this. I wish they had demand made this demand uh, in a context that does not again um, diminish its value because they they keep positive things like. We want this, and we must have this, and we must have that. Yes, you must have that, but for goodness sake, play the statesman, play leaders, play um, responsible governors. Um, go to those places where you think you have influence. Talk to your senators, talk to your members of the House. You have literally these people in your pockets. Call them, demand that they make the work to push through legislation that is important. But don't, don't meet for five hours, and then come back and say, that we want that and we want this. I don't think that's the way leaders uh, and elected persons should go. Yeah, all right. I've also heard people criticize uh, the difference or uh, the different um, um, you know, tunes that the House of Rep members are making from the Southern Governor. So you do have a strong point there, uh, very similar to what a lot of people have said also. But I want us to talk security now. Uh, they've spoken about state police and uh, you know, the need for you know, better policing of you know, their states. Um, but I, I want us to go to the north. Um, yesterday, we heard about 140 uh, students once again kidnapped in Kaduna State. Uh, we've heard of uh, multiple cases of kidnappings and, and killings in, in the north. Um, what do you think that the, or do you think it's high time the uh, northern governors also maybe met, uh, you know, and you know, came to their own conclusions, created their own resolutions um, with regards how to better police their states? There's rumors of... Um, uh, Borno State having a second governor now. I'm not sure if you've heard that yet. Um, uh, one of the Boko Haram or ISWAP uh, leaders has been appointed governor of certain regions in Borno State, according to what the news is saying. So do, does uh, the Northern Elders Forum feel northern governors need to do better and maybe uh, you know, have their own very, very important and urgent resolutions with regards security? Well, certainly. I mean, you can't have an end to um, concerns that are expressed regarding... I'm sorry I've lost some power, but I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. I'm trying to respect my own power. Um, there's no end to, to what you can do and legitimately under the law to improve the security of Nigeria. And the situation in the North is really tragic. And this is one of the points I'm making. I think Nigerians in the North and the South need to understand everybody is living under very, very, very stressful conditions from kidnappers and bandits. That's the first one. It's not a northern issue. It's not a full line issue. It's a national issue. What we have is a rampant runaway insecurity that is um, a, more, a lot more damaging in the north. They're, they're kidnapping children. They're kidnapping, closing school, down schools. This is an unprecedented threat that we're living under. It's a very, very serious issue. Northern governors uh, are, are running between uh, 
pillars and posts trying to find a way in, uh, to deal with this issue. Uh, my view is that uh, we, should, we should just simply recognize the fact that this is a national issue. Governors have um, a context in which they, they, they express their concerns. They have responsibilities to make sure that um, they channel them in, in through institutional mechanisms that would actually deliver more. Uh, all the decision making process. There is an issue about how much power the ownership of, uh, of, of the security situation as provided for by in the constitution. We support it. We believe that there must be some amendment in the manner in which governors, as chief security officers in states, operate. We support that. What we think is the wrong way to go about it is to have this thing about, for instance, no governor, a governor says, no, no, don't come to my state um, to undertake a security exercise uh, unless I'm informed. Now that's strange. Uh, and uh, it flies in the line in the face of, of, of the law. So that, that's really personally, as I said before, there must be something else that the governors are hinting at that they're not uh, willing to say very clearly what it is. So, but, but and I don't want to, to, um, to put words in their mouth. Yeah, but, absolutely uh, not. But is there anything wrong with just letting a governor know that there would be a raid, uh, you know, at some point in his state? Is there anything wrong with informing the governor? It's not, I'm no, not sure. No, no, certainly not. In fact, the, the more he's informed, the better. Um, see, the idea that uh, uh, governors uh, and the president and commander and chief of the armed forces are chief security officers, implicit in that is that they should work together. Um, the president controls the police, the he controls the DSX, controls the military. Governors are, are, are chief security officers. They complain we don't have control over the police, we don't have the control. Some of it is true, some of it is not so true. It depends on, on, um, on who you speak to. Uh, but cooperation and sharing of information is vital. It's important. Um, it's the language that says, don't come to my state and exercise and, and undertake a security operation unless I'm informed. That bit, that bit is worrying. It's new. Um, and if governors really feel this is the way to go, I would have thought uh, a podium after a five-hour meeting involving governors from one part of the country is not the way to go. They have a governor's forum. One of the, the chairman of the National Governor's Forum, Governor Faimi, attended the meeting. Uh, I think I saw him in among the governors. Yes, he was. He was there. Uh, I mean, he was there. You would, you, you would expect that governors, somebody somewhere who would have, um, would say, listen, why don't we go to the governor's forum? Why don't we go to um, raise these issues in a context where there's the president, there's the vice president, there are the IGP. Why don't we do these things uh, where they really matter? So come back to the question. What is, what is that position supposed to do other than to play to a gallery that really doesn't have a case? Um, I, again, I have a lot of respect for, for many Southern governors. I know them very well. I, a lot of them are very good people. But I think on this tendency to go public with issues that um, they can take up more productively in a context that does justice to the issue is just not good politics at all. Not on the southern government or not on the southern presidency thing, not on this issue of security, not on this issue of, of open hand. I somehow I think you have your what you're seeing is a decline in the quality of leadership, which is not peculiar to the South, but it, it, it involves the whole country. And it's very scary because it gives you a hint over what is likely to happen in the next few months. Um, the PDP and the APC are, are fighting themselves and fighting each other, and fighting and fighting civil wars among them. Governors who are in PDP and APC are now ganging up and saying, we want this and we want that. <laughs> Politicians don't say, we want this and we want that. They work for it. They, they, um, they, they soil their books, they do the heavy lifting. Um, and they don't create problems. Nobody in this country can go anywhere or get anything unless they have the buy in all parts of this country. That's the bottom line, whether it is uh, presidency, whether it is security, whether it is um, um, economic issues. You need 
the vibe in Papua, Nigerians, to the degree that you need the National Assembly to collaborate with you, to the degree that you need um, a presidency to work with you, to the degree that you want uh, Nigerian voters to work with you, you have to cultivate this habit of going to those places, lobbying, putting pressure, working with them. But you cannot just sit there and decide, we want this and we want that and we want that. It won't work. And if, if the law is the target, for goodness sake, does anybody think the, of the effect of uh, 100 million, 20 million people hearing about, oh, you must give us this, you must give us that? Do you? Does anybody worry that what this does is just simply to get people to dig in? Well, is it, is it also, um, Dr. Baba Ahmed, is, 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 the, is, the, is it the challenge of the resolutions or the way that they have been expressed? Uh, do you think that they could have been expressed in a totally different manner um, and they wouldn't, you know, maybe feel this way? Because it also is, it also is important, uh, Dr. Baba Ahmed, uh, apologies, it's also important um, with the way that these things are interpreted. Um, I shared earlier about the chairman of ADP, I believe, I don't remember his name now, who said that this is a gang up on uh, the presidency and, and uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Um, so when we have people interpret, it, interpret some of these things this way, ignoring the fact that some of these resolutions truly are important at a time like this, isn't that also more dangerous? Um, are you talking about the ganging up? Or the yeah, I mean, the, the interpretation, really. <laughs> when people interpret it as a gang up um, on the presidency and a gang up on President Muhammad Buhari, um, and of course, you know, like I said, is, the, is it the resolutions or the way that they have been expressed that, you know, seem to be the biggest challenge here? Because you've agreed that some of these resolutions, uh, the Northern Elders Forum, yes, I, you know, is in line with them. But is the way that they have been put out and saying, don't come to my state, if it is said as we would like that we are informed, would that be different? Um, the language of the uh, of the, the communique yesterday was was very careful. Uh, I read it twice. I could see um, um, governors trying to walk a very tight line between making outright demands and suggestions, yep. and uh, they chose their words very carefully, and which I thought was commendable. But still, what comes through is uh, 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 what comes through are two things: one, that ninety percent of what they said. Uh, where things that they have an opportunity uh, to raise in a context that is more productive. Um, engage the president, engage the National Assembly on, on the issue of the 5% uh, to those communities. Those kind of issues can be discussed in a different context, in a different setting. So, um, uh, yes, the style, uh, the, okay, the, um, the, the, uh, the manner in which they are raised um, is, for me, um, not the best. Um, also, some of the issues that they raised uh, uh, are counterproductive. For instance, the issue of the um, of the Southern Presidency raised in a manner, and this is not the first time it's been raised, scares uh, a lot of people from the northern part of the country because uh, people in the northern part of the country are under the impression that we are running a democracy. Democracy says that parties should field candidates. Um, going through normal, the, the, the legitimate processes of building candidates, and the citizens will ultimately decide which candidate is the best. In simple terms, that's what this is all about. Now, when, when, when political politicians who were elected, who know how elections uh, are held, now come out and say, we must be, the, the president must come from this part of the country. Um, they don't say must, but they say, <laughs> They say it in a slightly different, uh, more polite language, but you know that that's what they mean. Um, people say, "But well, how are you going to get that um, by resolution?" Uh, so all of us are going to line up. Uh, you get scared. What kind of president are we going to have in 2023 if if he is the product of threats and uh, intimidation and, to be honest, uh, some level of blackmail? So what happens if there is no? Northern uh, Southern presidency in 2023 because not all political parties feel Southern candidate because Northern govern uh, Northern voters choose a Northern candidate because the president doesn't go to the South. What happens? You 
you have a democratic process where uh, yield and other time has been primed to, uh, to, to literally reject uh, the outcome of a democratic process. This is very dangerous. So uh, what I'm saying is that governors are politicians. They know what politics is. They know how elections are conducted. What stops them from engaging all Nigerians, including northern politicians and northern politicians and their parties? What stops them? How, why, why are we having this recourse to threats and demands and, uh, and, and shortcuts that just won't work? The northern well, voter is not going to be intimidated or blackmailed or um, would wink into thinking that unless there is a southern presidency in 2023, the world will, will come to an end. He is not going to be intimidated. Um, he will exercise his, his rights as a voter. Uh, in, in 2023, whatever, whatever people say. But the Northern voter is also an enlightened voter. If somebody works hard enough to convince him or her that this candidate from the southern part of the country is the best for Nigeria, not for Igbo, not for Yoruba, not for the South South, not for the Fulani, not for the Hausa, but for Nigeria, I assure you, we will vote for a southern candidate. All right, I was just going to make very good preparation for people who are responsible, who are leaders, to be putting this issue in the manner they are. It's counterproductive, it just creates hostility, it creates resistance, and it makes the job of having a southern president that much more difficult. All right, that, that, that was going to be my final question, but you've already answered it. Um, Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. Uh, Publicity Secretary of the Northern Elders Forum. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I truly enjoyed the conversation with you. And we look forward to many more of these uh, uh, conversations. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Absolutely. Wow. So this, this indeed is something that seems that would continue to be a debate because we heard what the, Northern, what the Southern Governor said, you know, talking about how you know, they believe that the next president in Nigeria should emerge from the southern part of the country. It's open to interpretation. Like, you know, we've seen, we heard what um, um, the secretary, the publicity secretary of uh, Pandev said and how, you know, um, Dr. Akimaba Ahmed interpreted it. Yep. To me, it doesn't sound like a threat because we know about the the you know norm of zoning we, we know how the apc will come together and say we we'll believe that the presidency should be zoned to this particular region and the pdp could say make such statements so to me i just feel that uh, if if in any way some other people would say this is a great consensus that we need rather than having division and you know this one says it should be here should be here that other people would say it's great that you know we're having governors come together speaking in one voice to say let's agree on the south it's not like you're imposing that on the voters yeah. you know so it, people would interpret it different ways others would say you know you're making threats you're making demands others would say no this is a, a consensus that we need the unity that we're talking about Absolutely. so at the end of the day um, he mentioned one thing that I agree with, that the governors should do their work. It, you know, they talk, keep talking about the game of politics, you know. Definitely, you would not force, force voters to do what they want to do or what you want them to do, but politicians should do their work. If you want the governorship to be zoned to the south, then let southern candidates, you know, field in, let them buy the party tickets, let them win their primaries, and let the voters make the choice ultimately. But beyond the 2023 conversations, other ones regarding state police, we've been hearing conversations for time and time again, still about the issue he mentioned, let politicians do the work. So let's begin to see the government of Lagos State start talking about the state police. Let's see the governor of Ogun State start talking about state police. And beyond talk, let's see them begin to make that formation. Would they come out of the Nigerian police force? Would you have a system of you know, instituting trainings? How would you, let's begin to see the walk. Let's begin to see the action. Not just you say, we want this, we want this, or this is what we stand. Let's begin to see your action. Well, some of all of this still needs um, um, to, you, you still have to involve the amendment of the constitution with some of all of this. They can't necessarily go through all of it by themselves. The constitution needs to be amended. And, you know, it's, it's one of the th things that he mentioned also, that they shouldn't just make these resolutions. It's, it looks like playing to the gallery if you don't involve uh, the re representatives in the National Assembly to lobby for some of these things. And that's why it's politics. Um, 
um, which I agree with him, you know, on, on that level. Um, it, it cannot just be resolution after a resolution. There has to be lobbying, there has to be diplomacy, there has to be um, you know, negotiations, there has to be these conversations um, across board. Um, you know, my fear really, well, not a fear per se, but one of the things that I mentioned without, or I once again state is uh, the interpretation and how dangerous some of these interpretations are. Um, with the way that these things are, are taken back, you know, in different parts See, of the regarding country. Regarding that thing you quoted, I, I am not even going to take that to heart because yeah, but when wouldn't. northern governors meet, so they the, would, would no, nobody describes that as a gang up. When you, the, so the, when the Nigerian wouldn't. governors forum meet, nobody. So I just feel that's his own personal opinion. I don't right. feel it should take national precedence. It should but not cause any you chaos wouldn't, anyway. But there is thousands and thousands of people who look at people like this and you know take what they say seriously. There's thousands and millions of people who look at what. The Northern Elders Forum says, and we'll take it, you know, seriously. And so it's really, really about the interpretation. There's always going to be these characters. And yes, if you're enlightened enough, you would ignore it and say, well, this is just some character, you know, taking his time on TV to, you know, spew nonsense. But there's, it's, it's also very, very dangerous. And for a long time, we've continued to have these type of characters jump in into very, very important conversations and try to, um, d d you know, deflect, you know, try to, you know, paint it, you know, either religiously or, you know, or, or politically and just completely take away the meat of the conversation and, you know, and, and ruin everything. So there is those characters and they will interpret it their way so that whatever it is that the, the Southern governors have met and uh, come together as their resolutions uh, will be disregarded because somebody has painted it in, in, in a different way entirely. Then we I all owe it to ourselves to be informed about absolutely, key issues. So absolutely. when someone says something from their own biases and stereotypes, you don't just take it who clients it. There's people who still believe that the NSAS protest was meant to topple the government. There's people who believe that Namdi Kanu sponsored the NSAS protest. You can, you would see these really? people amongst, yes, you will see these people amongst you. They are learned, they have gone to school, they probably have PhDs, so they can't think for themselves, but there's some bias that you cannot take out of people. And, you know, when a person, let's say you can't wake up a person who's pretending to sleep, and when a person decides that that is bias that they want to work with, they will work with it. Sometimes you hear what the Minister of Information says, and you can't believe that these things are actually coming out of the minister's mouth, but that's what he has said, and that's what he said. You can't, you, you, there's nothing you can do about it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the conversation uh, with him. Um, he seemed like a, you know, a, a real diplomat, you know, a person who understands balance, understands the way that conversation should be had and the importance of those conversations. Um, and like I said, you know, I hope that we have many, many more um, of such. It's time for us to go. We apologize for not being able to, uh, of course, have uh, Mr. Ken Robinson join us, uh, Publicity Secretary of the Pan Niger Delta Forum. But thanks Enjoy for being us. with us on this uh, Tuesday morning. I would like to say um, happy birthday to my sister-in-law, Ogun and Juliet Ogun. Happy birthday to you. And uh, if you missed out on any of these uh, conversations we had, remember to join us on our social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa. Yes, my name is Anata Felix saying thank you again for being a part of our Tuesday morning.